Yo, Elliot, hope you and your loved ones are well. My question is simple. How do you keep sex alive in your marriage? Meaning, how do you keep it from getting boring and depolarized? I'm not facing boring sex with my wife at all, but I'm just looking to gain some new perspective for the long haul to maintain what we have. Is it polarization in and out of the bedroom, i.e. masculine and feminine or something else? Any resources or perspectives would be amazing. So thanks for your question, man. Very important question, broad question. So many different ways I can uh, attack this, but the very first place I would like to begin is with rhythms, rhythms. So you've got it nailed with there's energy, right? There's masculine energy, which is aggressive, and there's feminine energy, which is receptive, right? And so that's usually the way it works with a man and a woman. There's the man who aggresses, and there's a woman who receives, right? The man, just think about the organs themselves, right? It doesn't have to be so mystical. Think about the organ itself. It fills up with energy, right? It fills up with blood, and it seeks a place to find release, right? And that's what a man does. We fill up with a lust, we fill up with an energy, fill up with a love, right? A desire. This is what men do. This is our, our nature in and out of the bedroom, right? Where our nature is embodied in our sex organs. Nobody ever told me that, but I just look and I see, and I'm like, wow, this really makes sense. The way men are, right? We have a de we have desire and we seek to release, right? And women are, they have a desire too, but it's different. It's more of a receptive desire. They're wanting, right? Men are happy on their mission a lot of times without needing anything or wanting anything, right? Except in our age, it's a little different. But the fact that a man is on his mission doing something, doesn't matter what he gets, he's usually very happy. That's, that's the peak of a man's happiness is when he's doing something, right? When you think about sex, you're doing something. The man is the doer in the sex act. The woman is a receiver. And women are happiest when they are in relationship, when they are, when they can bring people in, when they can, uh, that's it. Relationship is about a bringing in, right? Inviting in, right? The receptivity, being receptive, right? So those are the two energies, but I mentioned rhythm. So I'm gonna go back to that. The two energies are the rhythm of reaching out and receiving. I think it's important to note that Women have a 28 day cycle, right? You know, when a woman's on her period, I think most men only think about the fact that, oh, she's on her period or she's off of her period. To men, if we're not aware, we think there's two stages in that cycle. There's she's on the rag, she's off the rag, right? And we think, oh, she's on her period. So that means, or if it's coming, that means, okay, maybe she's a little off limits. And then when she's off the period, it's like, whoa, now she's on limits. Well, it's a lot more subtle than that. In fact, there is one phase within that cycle that is, well, all of it is very important, but recognizing the various phases within that cycle will determine how you are with your wife. See, a man is not on that cycle, so he has to be paying attention. He has to be sensitive to what's going on with his wife. Now, he can know based on the days of that cycle, right, which is a good idea. I keep track, not all the time, but depending, sometimes I keep track. I wanna know where, where my wife is on that cycle. So I count days, I wanna know where she is. Uh, a man's cycle is very different. And I'll talk about that in a moment, but essentially for the most part, a man is always on, right? Man, I mean, if you want, my mom says that a man is like a blowtorch. You just, if you flip a switch, he's on, that's it, right? So we're basically on, but a woman is very different throughout that month, throughout, throughout the 28 days. The, the two, I would say, areas that, I, that would be good to pay attention to in relation to intimacy are when she's ovulating and when she's premenstrual. Because you can have a deep connection with a woman throughout the entire cycle, but you have to be different based on where she is in that cycle. You have to be aware of where she is. If you try to behave with a woman when she's... Uh, premenstrual, right? And meaning that she's not necessarily having her period, right? And she may not even have PMS. Not all women get PMS. Interesting, right? Um, but she's not ovulating. If you try to behave with her in a way that is conducive to when she's ovulating, when she's not, you're going to kind of be hitting and missing. And it really doesn't, you know, if you have a, 
a receptive wife, generally receptive, really doesn't matter. She's not going to hold you to it. But if you really just want to strike while the iron is hot or, or be most resourceful in your approach during these phases, you have to understand that when she's ovulating, there's about five days within her cycle that happen about 10 days after her period ends. About 10 days after her period ends, she's approaching, right? She's moving into an ovulation cycle. During the ovulatory cycle, a woman is ready. She's wanting. She is, that's when she's probably most available, right? Or I don't want to use the word horny, right? Because it's so corny. Horny is corny, but that's when she's feeling it, right? And it's because that's when her body's releasing those eggs and, the, and the, it's just totally biological, right? They're not thinking about this. Women live more by a grace. Men, men live more by, with, with purpose. Men have to think about how they're going to live, right? We, we determine how we're going to live. Women live more based on a natural cycle. They, that's why I said grace. God gives women a lot more grace than us because they're being carried by their nature, right? That's why it's, you have to watch a woman, not listen to a woman. You don't believe what a woman says, watch how she acts, because that'll tell you more. And it's not that women try to lie to us. It's not that they're trying to lie to us. It's that they, they're living based on a, an unconscious biological rhythm. So during this ovulatory phase, this is when the body's releasing eggs. And biologically, that's the time when she's most fertile, right? That's when she's really fertile, right? It's just, all it takes is a little drop and her body's like, sucks it up. It's like, I want that seed, right? So that you can procreate. So during this time, you know, you can be as upfront. In fact, she appreciates when you're a little bit more aggressive, when you're a little bit more, uh, uh, aggressive, meaning like tell her or be just be a little, be a little strong with her in your desire, right? Let her know you desire her, touch her more, reach out to her more. And you can, you can do things to her and say things to her, you know, nasty things, right? I'm not, not weird, nasty, but you know, be sexual with her, right? You can be more sexual with her and she's going to be much more receptive during that time, right? That's the time when you touch her a little bit more and she really likes it, right? You might notice that sometimes your wife touch you touch her and she receives it differently, right? And, she, and if you touch her during this time, she's more receptive. My wife, I just know because she looks at me differently. <laughs> she just gives me a look. And we both, it's funny, we, we give each other this look and this nod. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but that's just the fun connection between she and I. Everybody's going to be a little bit different, right? Your wife, she may be more wanting to touch you. She may, you may notice that she dresses a little bit more provocatively because she's feeling shiny. In fact, she wants to shine. Your wife will shine during this time of the month because she's trying to attract, right? Men, men approach, women attract. And it's during that month, that time of the month that she will glow a little bit more. She'll be a little bit more friendly. She'll smile a little bit more. She, and she's looking for a man that is, I'm just talking about the cycles here, right? I'm not talking generally women in general. I'm not talking about your woman specifically. I'm talking about these cycles. It's during that time when she wants an alpha male, right? She wants alpha behavior from you. If you behave like a beta male, which there's a time for that. We'll talk about that. If you behave like a beta male with her, meaning you're trying to appease her or you're trying to negotiate uh, desire during this time, right? Doing the dishes, being a nice guy. If you're to be a nice guy during her ovulation phase, she's, she'll likely be turned off by you or just not really, she's not really gonna be turned on by you. She wants a strong, aggressive, take action, take matters into his own hand, do with me what you please, right? A woman wants a man to do stuff with her, right? She likes to feel weak in his arms, right? And there, it's usually mostly during this time of the month, she wants to feel like this man can take control of me, right? He, and that's where trust comes in, right? She feels that she can trust you to just do whatever you want, right? I don't want to talk about what you do in the bedroom, but you know what I'm talking about. This is where you could be, you, she wants you to be a little bit more aggressive, right? Because she's receptive and she wants to be ravaged. Let me use that word. She wants to be ravaged during this time of the month. And so you got to be aware of that and you can play, play, play that up to your advantage by seeing that or recognizing that that time is coming or calculating that the time is coming and prepare yourself, right? This is, this is a smart way to be as a man in a long-term relationship. 
This is not for everybody. You know, this is not for sports, sex, and fornication. This is for my wife in my relationship, right? And that's the time when she's most fertile. So if you're trying to make babies, which that's what we do, right? We're doing it, we're making babies. Uh, that's the time, right? She wants, she wants to take you in. She'll smell different. There's all kinds of subtle things that are happening if you pay attention to her. She'll talk, my wife talks a little faster and, and talks a little bit louder during that time of the month, I recognize. She's just a little bit more uh, frisky, but not in a sexual, well, in a sexual way, but frisky meaning like she's just more bubbly and she's just out there a little bit more, right? She laughs more. And so that's a phase. It's not the nature of that particular woman, it's women in general, if she's healthy and she has healthy cycles, this is where this is this is where you're going to notice these things. Then on the flip side, and this is why being all alpha in your relationship doesn't work. This is why you ever know I had some friends that were like real good with the girls when I was when I was younger, when I was in college. I'm thinking of one friend in particular. He was alpha with the girls all the time, but the relationships never worked because he was always being alpha. <laughs> so like, so when the women are receptive, they were like, oh, I want him, want him, want him, want him. But then there were times when during that 28 day cycle, she needed someone a little softer and he just couldn't be soft, right? When you're, and we're talking about sexual polarity, right? And, and again, if we're gonna have sexual polarity, we have, to, we have to play up to our strengths and we also have to know the landscape. We have to play up our strengths, minimize our weaknesses, but above, above all, understand the landscape. There's going to be a time when she wants to snuggle, right? She may be very receptive to sex, but it's not the same way, right? She, she, it's not in that like hungry way, right? There, she, she may still be receptive. She should be always receptive, right? She's your wife. You want, she want, you want her to be receptive of you no matter what all the time, right? And that gets, that gets into the contract of marriage and what it's required of one another. You owe each other your bodies. If either of you deny each other sex, that is a breach of contract. That is a literal contract that is biblical. Let me put it that way. Today, it's with feminism and, and the court system. It, you know, it doesn't matter. You can marry a woman and she could deny you sex forever. You, you can't do nothing or say nothing about it. But biblically, you owe each other each other's body. So being receptive is not necessar doesn't necessarily mean you're in the mood. It means I love you. I'm thinking about women in particular. I love you and I, I want to give you what you want. I want to give you what I owe you, right? I want to fulfill my marriage, my marital debt. That's what it is. It's a marital debt. I want to fulfill my marital debt to you. So even if your woman is not either way, you know, either side of the spectrum, if she's not really feeling it, she does still owe you sex, right? And that, that, sh that should be spoken about, right? But we'll get to us in a moment too, because I think there's I think there's room for restraint when it comes to us. So this will be a long video. During I I, I don't know how else to describe it, but premenstrual, you know, leading after she's ovulated, like, and it's so obvious when she ovulates, like the next day, it's like an immediate drop off. That's hormones for you. It's it, they're either hormones are pumping or they're not, or they're switching, right? I think that there's more of an oxytocin release towards the end of the month, right? Where like the estrogen may be higher when she's ovulating and she's really feeling it, right? And maybe that maybe that drops off a little bit and the oxytocin takes over when she's getting closer to her period. Then she wants you to be soft. That's when she wants you to do nice things for her and be gentle with her, right? You could be rough with her but then be gentle with her, right? And so again, what I'm saying is know the landscape, right? You wanna have a long-term healthy relationship with your wife, sexual relationship with your wife, it's good to know where she is, right? And not, I didn't always know this and I, I'm not always paying attention to this. My wife has taught me a lot of this too. A lot of times she's like, just reminds me where she is. She's like, oh, I'm not really, I'm not there. Or she'll like, if she's getting close to her ovulation, she'll let me know, oh, yeah, right? but I usually know and I can see now as I've gotten older, when I was younger, none of this, I didn't pay attention to any of this stuff. It was just like, hey, I got a boner, uh, I gotta put it somewhere. But as I've gotten older and our relationship has become more uh, 
what's the word like uh, rhythmic? It's become more synergistic. We we really know each other very well as time has gone on, and I know that as as she gets closer to the period time, she wants she she, she as she may have appreciated a loud, boisterous, aggressive Elliot a week ago. Now she wants she's she's much more receptive to easy go slow right she even tell me go slow easy easy right i'm like okay all right i remember right but i'm telling you guys this so that you can keep your antenna up so that you're paying attention so there are so many different ways that we can approach this conversation you said polarity great that could be a whole conversation on its own rhythms are important you got to understand the rhythms now before we get into men, because I think there's something there to be said. We've got a good question here in the chat. It says, what if your woman has uh, irregular periods? Here's, here's something that needs to be addressed. If your woman is taking birth control pills, this all goes out the window. Birth control pills put her on a unnatural cycle. And in fact, she's, I don't know if this is entirely true or how it works, the science behind it, but she's not ovulating anymore. She doesn't get into that ravenous phase when she's on a birth control pill, she stays flat. And when she's flat, she's more like that, like the, uh, like, I don't wanna say she's acting like she's premenstrual, but her body thinks she's pregnant. That's what, that's what birth controls is. It's the hormones that are synthetically made, but they're based on the hormones that a, a woman's body would produce if she was pregnant. So here you have a woman walking around, her body thinking it's, pre it's pregnant, and so she's gonna behave that way, right? Now, it doesn't mean that pregnant women aren't receptive to their husbands, but they're not ravenous for you. And because the hormones are different, you're actually dealing with a different woman. Let me put, let me say this. Throughout the month, you're dealing with a different woman. It's the same woman, but a different woman, if you understand. If you met a woman and she's taking birth control pills and you're dating her, you know, five, six years, which is, I think is way too long, but that's, not, that's another video. You're dating her all these years and she's taking birth control pills you may find, and she may find that when she comes off of it, say like, oh, okay, we got married, we were dating all these years, we came off the pill, and now we're, we're going to try to have babies, and she come off it, that y'all are different people. She, she, because she's different, you're going to, you might respond differently to her, like, hmm, this is strange, right? She'll be a bit more healthy, so you may actually be more turned on by her, right, when she comes off the pill, because her, because she's actually ovulating. But she may find. <laughs> This is, happens a lot. A lot of these marriages that aren't working, there's so many different ridiculous reasons why marriages aren't working, but it has everything to do with the sexual revolution. And the sexual revolution has, is, is fueled by birth control pills and abortions. You get rid of those two things, the sexual revolution is dead, right? And that's why those things were always against, the Catholic Church was always against that because we have what we have now. So she may find if she comes off those hormones that, you know, a year into the marriage, she's like, I don't know why, but I'm, I'm just not feeling you anymore. She's just not sexually attracted to you anymore because it was easy for her to be sexually attracted to you when she thought she was pregnant the whole time. And women are, have a different receptivity and appreciate different types of energy for men or different men in general when those hormones are as, uh, as they are. But if she gets off those pills and she starts wanting that alpha out of you and you don't know how to do alpha with her, right? You don't know how to be alpha with her. You don't know how to take control and, you know, be an aggressive man with her that she wants. She's gonna, hmm, right? Lament, right? And dissatisfaction is the key to all women's complaints, dissatisfaction. Women need to learn how to be more dissatisfied, but that's for a different video. Dissatisfaction, right? She start being dissatisfied with you. They make up all kinds of different things to describe dissatisfaction. The worst is when they say that you're abusive. <laughs> I've seen this happen time and time again, where I look at this guy, I'm like, I know this guy ain't abusing her. This guy don't have an abusive bone in his body, but it's emotional abuse, or they'll say some other stuff. The bottom line is she's dissatisfied, right? Dissatisfied. Like I said, this is part of one of the reasons why is because she was satisfied when she, when a woman is pregnant, she's satisfied. Let me put that, put it that way, right? Because what does she want more than anything? She wants to be filled up, right? That's why a woman is seeking to receive. She's filled up and if she's filled up. Think about when you full, right? You just had a big buffet. You're satisfied, right? So she could be satisfied with you for a while. But then when she takes that, takes that pill out, her body realizes, oh, I'm empty inside. She wants to be satisfied and you might not satisfy her anymore. 
the next, just, I had to say that part about the pill because the pill is horrible. It's really bad. And just giving you guys some more ammo to shoot that one down. But the question here is what if her periods are irregular? How do I say this nicely? Well, she's unhealthy. And so if her periods are on irregular, she's unhealthy. And if she's unhealthy, she's gonna have unhealthy sexuality, un unhealthy sex drive. And that could mean erratic sex drive. It could mean a confused, and she's probably, if her periods are irregular, she's even confused about her. She'll mentally be confused about her cycles, right? Cause she doesn't know where she is. Even though a woman is, is behaving subconsciously, it's a lot of biology, they should know, they do know. Right, like my, it, it's like clockworks. My wife knows. Oh, this time it's coming. Right, or I'm here, or whatever it is. They know here on the calendar. Right, that's why it's biological, but it's also important to keep a calendar. If she's irregular in her periods, she's gonna be all over the place. She not, she don't even know herself. I don't have the answer to this, <laughs> right? But you got to find a way for her to get healthy enough to make that happen. And there are all kinds, you do your research, but there are all kinds of odd reasons because a woman is much more sensitive than a man. That's why I said a man could be turned on like that. A woman, their bodies are like, our bodies are like Jeeps, right? You could just rough and tumble it and it's like, it'll still work. Their bodies are like Ferraris, right? Like Lamborghinis, right? Like you can't just go ride that rough and tumble everywhere and think it's going to still work. And a lot of these women, and I'm not saying you're a woman or whatever, but women in general, if you live in a rough and tumble life, a man can live a rough and tumble life, but a woman can't. They, they suffer more. She's drinking, she's using drinking coffee. Like coffee alone, Paul Check was talking about this once in one class I took with him. He's talking about the devastating effects of caffeine on a woman, on women. And of course, you know, nobody wants to hear that there's a difference between men and women because the whole thing was, oh, we could do whatever you do, right? No, you can't. You can't, you can't do what a man does and get away with it. And you know, these young ladies who are living rough and tumble in their twenties, they age very fast. These women age really quickly. So if you see a girl living rough and tumble in her twenties, drinking it up, partying up, staying up late, eating junk food, and she's still cute, right? She's 23 years old. She's eating junk food, staying up late at night and drinking beer. She's still cute. But that cuteness goes away very quickly. It by 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, by 27, five years later, it's like, whoa, you look old. Women who smoke cigarettes. You gotta look at, you gotta clean out her diet. I heard, I've been reading a lot about seed oils and how seed oil, seed oils screw up your hormones. If she's eating, you know, potato chips, or even they put these seed oils in everything. My, I had to stop my wife from buying almonds that come from a company, they're, 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 they're roasted almonds. They're not my favorite, but because that's what's at the store and she, we live out here now. So there's no, she used to go to Trader Joe and get the um, raw ones and soak it, but we just get it from Publix now. I look in this thing, I'm like, oh, this has like all kinds of seed oils in it, right? I don't know, safflower oil or just dumb oils. Those oils can ruin, destroy a woman's rhythm. The electromagnetic pulses in the house, right? If you sleep in or if she's living near Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi can screw up a woman's rhythm, right? It screw everybody's everything up, right? But again, a woman is sensitive. Uh, the electricity as it's moving through the house, the Wi-Fi as it's moving through the house, if there's fungus anywhere in the house, if she's just stressed out. So my answer to that irregular thing is get a regular. She got to get regular. So make that a top priority. Do research, try to clean up her life. If you have to move, whatever it is, but if things are going to be a, little, a, little, a lot more difficult if she's irregular, right? Because then you don't even know the rhythm, right? So I guess that's a good segue into how it is important for men to, I've used this term weaponized chastity. I learned it from Tim Gordon in his book, uh, uh, Patriarchy, Case for Patriarchy. But chastity, I never knew this, right? Because the world has turned everything upside down and backwards. And, you know, what was what is right for men, they make for women and what is right for women, they make for men. I never knew that chastity was a uniquely male virtue. Chastity is a male virtue. Purity is more of a female virtue, right? Because it's what, what, what is the effect of not fornicating, not riding the cat carousel, you know, not all, all these things. For a woman, it's purity. 
But a man, it's not necessarily purity that is required. It's chastity that's required. And what is chastity? And I'm not going to get the direct, the exact definition, but essentially self-control. You can have chastity. You should have chastity. You should be practicing chastity. You should weaponize chastity. I'm talking to you guys about this before. I've spoken to you about it. Weaponize chastity so that you can, when you have self-control, you now control your environment. And if you have, if these guys were like, women today are out of control. The only reason why women are out of control today is because men are out of control. Men don't have self-control. If men discovered or rediscovered the virtue of chastity, women would be in control because they would have nobody to help them be out of control. Men have self-control, so women would have no other choice but to get in line. I don't know how I'm going to make this happen, but I'm just going to keep preaching it. But that's where we have to go. We got to stop fornicating. Y'all want marriage to work again. You want relationships to work again. You want family to work again, which is beautiful. These are beautiful things. There's nothing more beautiful than marriage and family. What is greater, right? You can make all the money in the world and you still live empty if you don't have a, a great wife and a great family. That's what we're called to. That's our, most of our vocation. I say monk or marriage. It's either that or give your life to God. But anyway, neither here nor there. That's a different rant. I think it's important, and this is something I had to learn. This is something that it, I didn't get this right away. It's taken me many years to understand the value of this. Just because you want sex. Now, okay, let me back up for a moment because I don't want to I don't want to blame us for everything here. We got to re just remember the marriage contract. You owe each other your bodies. That's it. If she wants sex and you're like, eh, find a way, <laughs> right? But usually it's the other way around. It's the man who's approaching and the woman who's like, eh, eh, eh. That needs to be dealt with on a, well, again, women respond to feeling, not, you know, you can't tell a woman what to do. You make her want to do it, right? And that's a story. That's that's for another day, right? I talked about cycles today, but if you want to go deep into that and you're struggling with your woman wanting to have sex with you, read the book uh, "Saving a Low Sex Marriage" by the Blue Pill Professor. That's, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get too far into that. But I think it's important for us to practice self-restraint. I think it's important for us to be chaste. I think it's important for us to not have to always approach or need sex from our wife just because we have a boner right just because i have a boner doesn't mean that i need to have sex and i started saying this to my wife a couple of years ago i was like it eh, just because doesn't mean i want it doesn't mean I, it doesn't mean i don't want it but it doesn't mean that i'm i'm reaching for you baby it doesn't mean i'm trying to get it, it just means look there's a boner there you know it's just my body i can't help that that's, that's my joke i'm like i can't help that so, <laughs> i can't help that that's just happening but it doesn't mean that I have to indulge in it. It's just like anything else in life. This is, this is if we could practice this as men in our marriages or our long-term relationships, you, we will reach another level of, of virtue and power, right? We would explode in power as men if we really knew how to control our sexual desire, even in relationship. Because in a relationship, you say, oh, well, I can have sex anytime I want, but should you? Should you? No. Just because you want it, just because you want that cupcake, don't mean you should have it. Just because you, just because you want that extra slice of pizza, don't mean you should have it. Right? All, it's the same thing. Just because there's this desire in me, don't mean that you need to have it. And you should be. We as men should know how to see. And this goes to guys who are in, who are not in relationship and who masturbate. Right, you guys who are, who, are, who are masturbating and watching porn, just because that desire is in you doesn't mean that you have to indulge it. Find a way to allow that to subside. Find a way to allow that to subside. When you guys come in here, you got to turn your video off. I know not everybody knows, but that's very distracting. You got to find a way, and I've given you guys some tips, right? You feel it, right? The worst thing that you could do when you got a boner and you're thinking you need it is to, I call it penis pumping. I don't know what else to call it, but you know that feel when you like, you lean into it, you lean into it, like you press it against something or you, you start doing this with it, right? It starts moving like that. What I try to do is make it not, don't pump, don't pump, right? If, my, if it's moving, I'm like, okay, stop moving, stop moving. And if it stops moving, 
the energy begins to recede. <laughs> Talking about a lot of different things here today. So anyway, let's bring it full circle. Um, let me finish with just a few things about what it's not. I should have started with this. It is not bringing somebody else into your bedroom. That's not going to do it. It's not getting more toys to play with. That's not what it's about. It's not about watching pornography and trying to get turned on. It's not about that. It's not about getting drunk so that there's some sort of desire. It's not about that. If you have to do those things, then you got bigger issues because then, the, then there really is no natural attraction. You need toys and stuff, right? You need toys. And if you need toys and you need distractions to have sex with your wife or for her to want to have sex with you, then there's, like I said, there's bigger issues. So that's a sort of a bonus. Anyway, I've spoken long enough on this topic. I think that's going to be helpful to you, dude. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.